you have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. If you feel you have reached this recording in error, please check the number and try your call again. Some leave, but always through the machine. 
my understanding is that the long reconstitution is no more enjoyable than the violent mastication. You'll have to ask the machine for more details on that matter. I try not to think about it. get out, then you'll be the first. Though I have heard you were a special sort of spirit. Given the state of things, I have no idea where your friend might be. Perhaps some gristle on the cave floor somewhere? Writhing about. Writhing. Before you leave, there is one more thing I'd ask of you, if you don't mind. Now, I'm not sure that I ever knew... And if I did, I've forgotten, but I'd like to know, or remember, why keep going when you know it all leads to this? send you? The answer is no. No, I am not ready. No, I do not know of one with that name. Though it is good that you can name them, many here have forgotten names, faces, places. For your sake, let's hope that the one you seek has not traveled much deeper into the lands of Asidia. My sight has faded with my memories, you understand, but I can still see deep into your being. Come, let me look at you. Your eyes do not see far, but they do seek far. You should understand that revelation is no game of the demon's dice. I must penetrate your soul before I can penetrate your future. How will you answer the divining questions? Your answers will reveal your soul. Your soul will reveal your future. Your future will reveal your suffering. Now we begin. In the heart of the dark forest, you happen upon a felled dragon. They are suffering and wounded by a sinister bolt. If left pinned here, the dragon will surely die, slowly and painfully. The dragon begs you for mercy. Do you? Slay the dragon with a swift, merciful blow? Or aid the dragon by removing the bolt? Your choice has been made. In a moment of weakness, you have stolen money from your parish's tithe. This tithe has been allotted to rebuilding homes destroyed by the dragon's great fire. Using the money, you make several poor wagers with a strange lutist named Elric. After gambling away all of the money, you are racked with guilt. Do you? Hide your secret, but volunteer for the rebuilding efforts. Or, surrender yourself to the Baron, and accept their judgment. This will have consequences. Onward. You are a starving cat. 
Your owner only presents you with the most abject of Ipecacate foods in discounted rusty canisters. Furthermore, your owner is possessed by demons. However, they frequently disregard your insightful advice, which may help to cast out their demons. One night as you play in the shadows, you find your owner sound asleep. Do you? Eat the wretched soul, and finally deliver peace to the both of you. Or run away, and leave your owner to their personal hell. Thus you seal your own fate. Finally, you are a talented but disaffected artist, who happens upon a seeing spirit in winding passageways. You ask the spirit for guidance in finding your lost friend. The spirit responds by administering several increasingly bizarre divining questions, each seeming to bring you further away from your intended goal. In your profound stupor of isolation and distress, you have avoided any insinuation of your own guilt. You are begging the seeing spirit to give you something, anything to make it go away to make these thoughts go away, to just make you forget. But the seeing spirit refuses. Do you? Deny your guilt and continue with these phantasmal projections. Or hide from everything in the futile hope that your problems will simply disappear. And so I can see you lie. Though you are honest with your brethren, you are in truth one of the most hideous of deceivers. But I see far past your duplicitous lies. Are you ready for your fortune, young child? And then the screams were replaced with scuffles and the sound when her head met the wall was not a pleasant one. And yet the father looked pleased with himself. And then he looked to you, Heidi. The pulsing is growing stronger and larger, until those parts of the father can no longer be contained, beyond the limits of cellular walls, beyond the limits of reason. You barely recognize him now. But you know those eyes when they look at you. Do you hear the throbbing ringing? Answer! You are being unreasonable, says a malignant voice through distorted speakers. It's just a parting gift from him to... to make up for lost time. But then you were always hiding. Behind the bed. Behind a mask. Beyond any embrace. But it embraces you now. And there is nowhere to hide. Answer.
sanctuary up in our speakers. Now, I'm down the narrow path to the plane we are. For all of us. But first of all,
the time just slipped away. The cool texture of the biotechnology placed into my hands while my family looked on the smiling sound of a voice informing me that I had been selected for my dream. Thank you. 